so let me go through about um, how we can write unit test cases for the Spring Boot application and what are the things we can do for different layers. Okay. So say this is like a basic Spring Boot uh, project that we have. This is like a basic application. In this Spring Boot project, we have one customer class, which has a two field, first and last name, uh, which is annotated with the Lombok annotations. Okay. So this is basically our Pojo object. Next, uh, we have a component name foo, which has a gate method, which is gate class dot name. It's just written in the web. Then we have another uh, component dot bar method, right? That is dependent on the component foo. Okay. And the two bar method has been overridden, right? This is like a normal uh, Spring Boot application with a couple of components. Now, in the application or properties, there is nothing. Now, for any kind of you know Spring Boot application, how we can you know write the basic testing? So here we can you know write the basic testing using uh, Spring Runner to run with. This is like a JUnit four kind of a syntax, and we're going to be having like a Spring Boot test method that is there. Okay. And here you can, you know, auto wear your default component that are there. And you can write your normal test that whichever, you know, asserting one value over the matching, uh, asserting the value with the assert that framework. So this is like a spring test board. And in the spring test board, what we have here is uh, basically we have the JUnit annotation asserts test run with and compressed, which is basically a matching annotation. Any kind of uh, test you wanted to do, you can, you know, simply basic first test we should do is just a test load context. There is no assertion need to be given. So we can simply write the first test as a public void load context. Check whether the our configuration is correct or not. So that we can put this is our normal load test if it is passed that means your all the bin wearing is successful you don't have to write all of this as per se but if you wanted to inject any of the beans you can do that and then you just simply you know here we are checking good that what is the expected value assert that so this asset is coming from your uh, normal Java JMNIT uh, asset. So here we are using asset back and we have the bar dot to string and the matcher dot contain string is whatever you know the file name that is written. So that is the first test we need to add. The annotation is the Spring Boot test, and the second annotation is the run with that is the Spring Runner. That is for the JMNIT four we have to do and in the spring form uh, in the normal our maven form what you have to add it we have to add the dependency name spring boot starter test with the scope test so all our uh, test related annotation will come from that okay and if you want we can you know do the other testing here it shows about you know testing a particular object, you create an object and then doing the asset. That is not required. But your normal first test you should write on a Spring Boot is this one in JUnit 4. Any question either? No, 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 sir. Okay. You have understood this annotation. What is yes. Yes, so it's basically going to load a test context. And when you're running it as we are running with Mockito, we use the Mockito runner. Here we are using the Spring runner. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the basic test we write. The next is um, come say if we need to write this uh, test using JUnit 5, right? So JUnit 5 is a little bit of different. Okay. okay. So here you have that uh, Spring application that has been created, JUnit uh, application, and one component is there. 
So in case of writing JMnet pipe test, what are the things we need to change into the bomb.xml? First of all, uh, we have to get the dependency that we are getting from the Spring Boot starter. It's all itself going to bring in the JMnet four. JMnet four kind of a dependency and if i wanted to use jmnet 5 what i have to do i have to exclude the dependency from jmnet 4 out of there right we should exclude that so here what we have here is that normally in JUnit 5 what we have to indicate is the JUnit Jupyter and JUnit Jupyter engine that we have to import. But certainly we don't require the two version of JUnit 4 and 5. So we're going to be excluding this from the Spring Boot test, which is going to bring in the JUnit 4 dependency. Okay. Now what going to be changed out here? The runs width uh, will change to extend width. And when the extend width comes, it's going to be spring extension dot class. Okay. And the rest of the things will be like your Spring Boot test will be there. But we will be uh, adding the spring context support with the extend word keyword rather than run with keyword. And here is the load context is just going to check whether this object has been created or not. So here you can, you know, and they have annotated into the constructor, the object, and then put the value out here. And they are checking that particular object has been loaded. That means that context has been loaded because currently your object is the only the single component that has been there. If you even don't put that assertion, assert non that Now assertion is again coming from the Jupyter package. So just to indicate ORG JUnit is a JUnit 4 and ORG JUnit Jupyter API is a JUnit 5. Okay. Then you are just taking that particular component has been loaded or not. That means it's being context has been loaded or not. Any question on JUnit 5 as such? Okay. Oh, fine. So the difference is only the with the annotation extend with and the assertion that you are using separate packages. Right. Okay. When that has been done, the next question maybe comes is how we can, you know, check different layers. For example, uh, how we can do the JP layer testing, how we can do web layer testing. Okay. So let's go one by one. So our JP or data level testing, how we can do this? Again, here we're going to be having now going to be see the spring boot starter data gp has been included and the corresponding um, h2 database has been included now here um, we are including the spring boot starter test so that means it will be in its jvd 4 version So for your JPA application, what do you have? You have a simple class, which is your entity class. And it has like a generated value ID and a name. And the generated value is all through your ID field. So in your repository, it will be foo and then the long. That is the value. So what we like to test, now we like to test the repository itself. So this repository we like to test. And there is no other additional configuration we require. Now, how to test this? So normally your again uh, comes your context load that checks that every bin auto wiring is successful or not. Then comes your data level testing. 
So for your data level testing, Spring provides Spring Boot provides layer wise testing annotation. So you're going to get the data GPA test annotation that is there. Now, as we are using running Spring Runner, you will get a few additional inbuilt objects that you can integrate into your test. For example, a test entity manager that will be automatically created and you can just do auto wear and you can have that entity manager comes in. What is the purpose of this entity manager? We're going to be also be checking. You can get a normal uh, entity manager as well. So you, it, you can take out the full repository. Okay. Now, what is the entity manager that will help you is to create some data, initial setup data for your test. Okay. For example, it's going to be persisting this uh, object with certain words and value. So as the ID field is null, so it will create the object. And it will also check in whether the words ID is not null. And test entity manager also do persist flash find. So it will also can be help you to done that same kind of a testing and also persisting that into your H2DB. And it also asserting the same. Now, so that means either you can use the entity manager which itself is going to be nothing but a reference of your test entity manager. But using that, you can create some data for setting up some data that you can test or query or do any kind of, you know, custom and uh, methods you go to write. You can test it out. So here you have the full save. When you call the full save, that is also saving against the test database. And you also check that 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 is there. So if you, in your application, if you are using uh, maybe a MySQL or Poses in your main application, and in the testing scope, you want to use the in-memory database like H2, then what you have to do in the resources properties file, you have to first make this H2 scope as a test, that is whatever is provided, is scope, of H2 only for test. That particular driver is only using the test scope. And when you are running your application, then it will save into that. It will not actually going to be overriding any record into your dev environment or other environment wherever you executing the test cases. And you can give that default uh, annotations. It will automatically take care of then so basically then you can do save and your own custom queries you can do and check whether the result is coming up or not so how to test the data layer is very simple you put the data gpa test annotation and that will automatically give you both uh, either test entity manager you can use to set up some data or you can go through of the entity manager and those can help you to create the classes and you can auto wear your own repository with that you can also test so any questions on the jp repository testing no sir oh fine hello yeah sir it's a mandatory to use entity manager in testing not mandatory, but if you need to set up some initial data, for example, I don't want to set uh, check the normal functionality that the card operation provide. That is, I'm not going to check save, etc. So I can choose to uh, create some additional data. Then I can use the entity manager to do it because it is JPA data library that we are using. So obviously here we're going to be using entity manager. And as they are using Spring Data Book, there we can use to create the additional data that is there required for our thing.
you can also incorporate JVS template to set up the data. Or you can set up some data using uh, we really use we use the mock wave server, a embedded server we first launch. Okay. And then against the server, we use the mock MVC class and we request and response using get put post. And we assert that particular response and the status code with that. So let's see how this is done. So again, uh, let's revisit, first visit the form file. So at this has the web layer. So we have, we're going to be seeing the dependency as Spring Boot starter web. And the starter space, so that means it is with Spring JUnit uh, 4 and have a testing. Now, if you just look into this resources, I don't think there will be anything, but let's look into the web application. So in the web application, what we did is uh, itself in the web application, we have added a REST controller. And the REST controller is having like a gate mapping which is a git slash a path variable that is the name and within that it calling the grid service they have you know put a basic service grid service and then using the grid service it just saying the hello some name and the response object is the greeting that we are returning as a part of this so how we can test this out so what you can test we can test the status message, whether it is 200 or not. We can check whether we get a response back with the greeting. That is obviously here the response is by default JSON. Uh, if we, you know, by default use that. And um, then we can check whether that within the JSON, there is like a greeting kind of element, JSON element, and that has a certain value called hello, whatever name we pass. So that, assertion if I need to do how we can you know do that so just like the data application right we have to have this wave MVC test so previously what we have the data JPA test now we have the web MVC test so in the web MVC test what we're going to be getting by including this annotation is the mock MVC mock MVC will help us send a request okay and here if we wanted to uh, overwrite the default object that means you don't require the actual service object or service layer to be injected you can create using mock bins mock bins is a replacement bins that you can create and on top of that you can control the behavior of that using the simple mock it okay so that means mock greeting service dot greeting whatever you know the method may be greet so that you can uh, override using mock it like they have done mock it when greeting service git a name has been passed then you are returning a particular response object with a certain greeting okay Sir, we can use auto wire instead of mock bin. That will work. No, when you use the auto wire, then it's a real object, right? Okay. So that's why we have to use the next layer. We need to mock it up. Okay. Next that's layer we use the mock bin. If when you have done the auto work, then you cannot uh, control the behavior, right? It will actually call the real object. So okay. There is no need for me to call the real object. Rather than I need to call a substitute object, right? So there I can use the mock bean annotation. And then within the test or in the, you know, before test method, setup method, I can, you know, pass mock that using normal spring mock when then kind of a syntax. 
now what is the mock mbc is doing mock mbc actually going to help you send the request back to the embedded server right so here uh, what are you going to do you're going to perform mock request builder get so you simply pass the get with the value that is the path variable now what is you are expecting you are expecting the status should be okay you also expecting the the content type should be application json utf8 okay that is the json response then you're going to be asserting the body okay so how are you going to be asserting the body we're going to be asserting the body using json path queries so what you are expecting you are expecting within the json there will be a greeting element so you are putting at the red dot there is a greeting and that particular greeting elements value will be greeting and we can add as many expect value if you want we can add that I do need to use at the red greeting. We can use anything. No, no, no. We use the proper syntax to get the greeting. So we can use anything instead of that or. Mm -hmm. we, uh, depending on your variable name, um, the particular JSON field name, you have to put it there. And you can extract the value. So you can say and expect you are getting the JSON path. We are extracting this, and the value that you are wanted to be match is this one. So that should be matching. So with this, with uh, mock MVC, uh, what we can do, we can do the status check. We can also do the data check. We can also do the body check using JSON path queries. Okay, so what is the annotation we are using on the top? We are using the web MVC, and then we, we need to auto add the mock MVC that will help us to create request, and then the mock bin, whatever you know, dependence bin you have on your controller, you can mock them out, and you can uh, mock the behavior of your service method, and then you can, you know. Do this, take this. Any questions? Okay. After we done up to this, uh, what you can now let's look into the integration test. So, what is the integration test? So, when you create REST APIs, right? Okay, so that's the service. Those, those APIs need to be consumed by anything. It can be consumed in another Java application or services, or it can be consumed in a front-end application client. It can be consumed in a mobile client or any kind of client. So what is that integration test serves? Integration test serve additional test, which is going to be checking that whether the request that the API is supposed to send or receive, they are working as expected. So now under this, we have three projects. One is we have is a customer service, that is the API or service. Then we have the customer client, and then we have the customer integration test. OK. So more or less the cases of integration tests, we actually call the actual APIs. So how are we going to be doing this? As it is like a theme module, so in the Spring, uh, in the Maven, actually, we are mentioning all the module names. So these are all the sub-modules that are there. Now let's look into the service, which is a straightforward thing. It has a particular response. OK. It has a simple application. And this application has a repository that has been injected. 
and this application is listening to an application ready event so it has an event listener so whenever the application gets start it reads from the stream of fixed value abc it stores the value as a customer see customer details it is saving in the customer repository or service then it has like a rest controller which uh, depend on the customer repository or it can be depend on a service it looking up the customer id or else it's going to throw the customer not found and then it's listing up all the customer that are there two methods are mentioned out here right so this been our service repository is straightforward it's just a customer and long and this is just a customer teacher first name last name email and long line so that been our service or maybe you can say this is like a card operation on customer service now on the client side what we have is this is also like a spin boot application okay it has a test and also it's taking another dependency that is where mock okay what is the where mock purpose is one more purpose is to test out the contract that is there okay so i think before we go into the integration test let us look and uh, let me talk simplified example of where mock then we can also look into contract driven uh, testing as well okay then we can come to the integration test okay so in the pom.xml what we have we have uh, now adding additional de dependency that is we are taking the spring boot cloud stub runner contract stub runner so how that is working or how you can write that particular test let's check so it is simple a java application spring boot application it has a bean name rest template rest template as you know is used to call any third party apis right and this template is actually called a greeting client okay so getting client being a, the previous client that we have seen. So that will be running in a separate port. And this service will call that particular service. Okay. Uh, using this template for get for entity, it's basically a get call and it's expecting the greeting class to be written. It has been there. Okay. And then that particular client is used out here. This is just a client we have created, and there is nothing more actually. It's a, just a client component that we have, and we have the actual application which is defining this REST template. So, client is dependent on the REST template, and it has a one method called greet to which it basically calling a third party API. Now, in that scenario, how we can test the client layer? Okay. So your main application, obviously, same as before, it's just taking the context, get loaded properly. There's no issues. Then comes your Spring Boot test. And here we are giving auto configure where mock on the port 8080. So here we have the greeting client, right? And the object mapper. Object mapper is used to map the normal Java object to JSON and from JSON to Java Pojo object. Okay. So, what is the where mark going to do out here, sitting out here? First of all, this object value you know created a new greeting and it's been converted into a JSON, right? Then from the where mark, stuff for. So, what do you mean by stuff for? That means we are stopping the actual service that is there, right? 
get is greeting slash world will return a response with the header content type this with body json with status code ok then from the client it calls the greeting client so only difference you have see right here there is no mock bean has been used actually the client or the object has been autoware okay so as it has been autoware what going to be happening is that it's basically going to now make a call to the external service but do you want to make a call in an external service when you're writing your unit test cases no right so in that case what you can do we can you know create a where mock that means we are mocking the external apis and we are we are capturing the path of the request that has been set so in the one more client it says that it's actually going to be listening to the port auto configure where mock on the port 8080 what is the port 8080 port 8080 being the port the, to which the external service to recite right and in the test what is the where mock going to do is going to be stubbing any request that is having like a getting dot world and then the getting dot world will be captured so it will be where the actual call will be stub out and there will be no mocking as such on the actual method call but actually the call is not going to the external api or services and then from there it basically intercept the calls and it basically return a substitute response and from the substitute response it will automatically convert it and you check that whether that particular greeting becomes a hello world okay yes okay so for that what the dependency we have included out here is that we have included the spring framework cloud and from the spring framework cloud we have used contact stuff runner okay so that will actually intercept the external api calls so that is the concept of where mocking okay so for the word mocking only thing is that same the two other annotation is same only auto configure word mock which port you wanted to listen to and you're going to be intercepting any kind of url and that will cases you return a response out there okay so you basically stub this out return your response yes sir in this uh we have to like you we can use JUnit with uh, Wiremock or only with Mockbean we will use Wiremock? No, no, no. Mockbean is a different concept. Mockbean means you are not actually auto wiring the real bean. Okay. JUnit is our uh, framework to running, creating unit test cases. Okay. okay. JUnit is the framework to create unit test cases whichever layer you want to be testing you are either testing a normal simple utility class or you are testing a service you are testing a web layer right you are testing a rest api client whichever layer you want to be testing junit will be there right now for the spring boot the spring test context has been loaded not the real context is loaded that's why you have either this application Test dot properties or email file, or you can you know specifically create a resources folder under the test, and you can create your own overrides that is there. Like for example, in your unit test cases, you wanted to use actually the in-memory database rather than the real database. Okay. Okay, but what about the mock bins? Since I am asking that wire mock will be used with mock bins only, right? No, no. Here we can see that we have not mocked the greeting client, right? So mock bin only need to be used when you actually wanted to give a replacement bean, which is not a real object. 
so that you can in using mockito you can mock out the actual function response okay how the function will behave that you can control but here we are actually injecting the real bin right with autoware now we are not say we are not mocking the external api call using mockito rather than we are using where mock which mm -hmm. actually going to be intercept any outgoing request on a port and a particular url pattern and then it will return the response back okay Okay. So that means in the greeting client, only this line has been intercepted. Execution of this line has been intercepted and a response has been written without blocking the thing. Intercepted means when the request actually goes out, right? HTTP request goes out, right? Using HTTP client. That HTTP client request goes out over the network so that particular network call the where mock will capture and it's going to be replaced with the another substitute value but the advantage over here is the rest of the pieces of code or rest of any logic that will execute correct mm -hmm. but you are actually calling the real method but you are not actually calling the real service because when you are making the call it is automatically captured so your request doesn't never goes to that particular external service it will be okay. intercepted and a, another response has been written that you can accept so like who will capture my means you are telling that there will be no uh, real external service but there will be a real method call right so who, who will capture that real method call is the word mock the dependency we have included okay 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 so it will stop out the external api call that is there and it will return a response there it built a response and return that okay okay so that is the concept of where mocking okay that concept we have understood now you have to understood between a client and a service what is the api defined it defines a contract so what is the contract means that i have this this endpoint i have this a request and this is the response object you can get it so how will check only the contract is working or not because when i'm a client what i do i read either a documentation and based on the documentation i got to be generating my either i want to be manually created the client objects classes and i'm going to make the call now if any kind of api's request response object get a change what going to be happen my clients will get failed correct because now the api request will become invalid right right so so that means the contact between the client and service has broken or not i may not know correct so for testing that what i can do so that's where your contact based testing comes in okay two models are there so what is this model is doing let's quickly check inside that let's first take the dependencies so for contact based testing again uh, it so will if there is no response then uh, there will be like a server error or something by that no, not will... contract change contract means that i have like a gate put post the apis right okay uh, and delete four apis right normal card operation i have mentioned that this is like a customer okay and the customer id i take as a path variable now if i take the customer id as a query parameter so obviously my client will go into be break right okay okay because the client are expecting the value to be passed in a path variable path but variable. it is expecting in a query variable so i may 
change and these changes happen for not the new api that i'm creating this will change will happen for the older apis okay which are already been in use correct and you don't know who is using your uh, apis right right all right unless you have a, like a proper api uh, life cycle management system you don't know who are your clients are okay so in that we can, case we can make a new api with that you new can query make query a new API or you can modify the existing api right hmm. but for that we have to create a test case eh? so we get to know that if my changes is going to potentially going to break any clients okay okay so that is called contract driven testing. Okay. Okay. Fine. Yes, so here they're using the Spring Data Mongo. Okay. And they are using the reactive version. Reactive version is totally depending on the Mono and Flux, which is based on the concept of reactive manifesto and uh, similar to the RX Java, right? So they basically asynchronous uh, processes, right? So in that case, what you're going to be importing, you're going to be importing your, uh, instead of Spring Data, Spring Boot Starter Web, we're going to be using WebFlux. The other thing remains the same. We are using Spring Starter Test. We now going to be also Project Reactor. We're going to be a Reactor Test. And we're going to have the Spring Cloud Starter Contact Verifier. So this dependency will ensure that your contracts are not breaking. Okay. So we're going to be writing our normal services. So let's see how the service is written. The service syntaxes will be a little bit of different than what is normally we have used to. So this is like a data setter POJO object. And this is like a configuration. We know about configuration, right? So what is this configuration is talking about? That here we are defining routes. So in the routes, we have injected uh, reservation repository. Uh, in the reservation repository, what is the, they are doing? They are uh, checking the routes dot get reservation. Okay. And then from the request object, uh, request, they are say, okay, body, RR, find all, reservation class, right? So that means it will return all the reservation, okay? And build and returning this, okay? So this is like a reactive uh, way of writing the code. There is no specific uh, web level controller, rather there are handler. Okay, then we have our simple reservation uh, repository and the reservation service, okay, application that is there. So your repository is, uh, there's no specific service, repository is going to be called from the routers itself, the configuration, and it's returning the path. That's been our... Uh, Whenever we talk about uh, reactive programming, is it mandatory to use reactive programming? Yeah, benefit of reactive programming is that it is asynchronous, right? So it will not going to be work, wait for the client to get completed, right? And uh, it will be easily be scalable, okay? It is uh, having following the reactive manifesto. So you have to just read one paper named uh, reactive manifesto. Okay. So you can find that on reactive manifesto.io or whatever the URL is. So in the reactive manifesto, they are basically pointing out four details, right? Whether your service is uh, supporting message driven, whether the, your service is scalable, 
So it need to be responsive in under uh, any kind of load. Okay. It need to be resilient for a failure. Okay. It need to be elastic and responsive under varying workload. Okay. Responsive means it will return the response in a timely manner. Right? Resilient means it will not, it's, it may fail. Every service is going to be failed. Instead of when it fails, it's not going to be cause a total system also to a single point of failure. No, it's a, like an isolated failure. And it also have like a message driven. Okay. So these are the basic four points. And based on this, when you say message driven, that there are like asynchronous message processing using even stream, etc., lose the couple between them, right? And also, it has other thing, right? It is basically reactiveness. It's basically non-blocked. Like in a uh, message driven, when we use a uh, rabbit MQ or active MQ, like something like that. So yeah. in that, in that, we actually. Yes, we have to like use reactive programming that also can be done in uh no not necessary there we mostly use a kind of a listener and producer kind of a concept but reactive manifesto also says about the other things as well okay 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 so now here we have few tests so here in the, we don't have anything on the application Now in the contract driven, what we are saying that now we have uh, created a particular test using Ruby. Ruby being the another language. Okay. So using here you are defining the contract. What you are defining out in the contract is that should return. So your expectation is this should return all reservations. Responses status should be okay body will be two values that they have mentioned headers will be this like a application json value and the request should be on a reservation method will be get okay is defining that particular contract using ruby programming language okay now let's see how the tests are written so test are this is like a basic test and the http test is uh, also what you can do here actually they are doing the only mocking the bean of reservation repository using mock means okay as we previously have seen we have like a spring boot test right and uh, here they have actually using the web flux test as we are using web flux okay Previously, we have a web MVC test. So when you are using web flux or the reactive part of the API, then we replace the MVC with web flux test. That's the only difference. And the other thing is here we are not using REST client, REST templates, or mock MVC. Rather than we are use a separate client, that is the web client, or here in the test, we are using web test client okay and using reservation we are mocking the reservation repository we can mock a reservation service as we had one and then we are returning when you say find all you're going to be getting these two values right now how the client will make the call previously we are using mock mvc to make the call now this client will just make the call using get this particular reservation this is like a exchange then the status is expecting is okay right 
then it's expected the header to be this like this expect the body again the json path other it with the root out here zero with the zeroth element name being the zin so this is like an array so added zeroth element name will be zin okay now here actually again your rest controller will be called but as you have more the particular uh, reservation repository it will just return that content type that is there and the values you can you know assert that only changes you will find here is the mock flux test instead of mock mvc test and here you are you know having instead of rest client you are auto adding web based client so we will we can use we have to use dot the this just function is for creating object just function which one flux dot just yeah flux dot just what is the flux is actually does flux and mono there are two types that you can return out of here so when you say flux it indicates that you are returning multiple value mono being you are returning a single value so when you say flux just so basically it resolving these two values and it's returning a flux or service response with this type right so if you can again go back to the particular so service if we type. use one object then we will use mono you have to use one or either object either you can return multiple object or you can return the mono that is and a single zero. zero means if there is no mono means single object plus means multiple okay so there is no null uh null is generally we don't pass a plus, right if you need to pass a blank we can pass blank object okay so again going back to the test now this test is uh, only for the http test so first of all instead of taking the line number 15 web mvc test we are taking web flux test okay we have imported the configuration that was mentioned in the reservation HTTP config that when the particular request comes in reservation it goes to this repository and it's written as server response and a server request instead of a normal HTTP response or something like that or response okay fine Photo test, KCTP test, we have done entity test. We have seen this like a basic entity test. We are getting the reservation flux, flux of reservation objects, right? So when you're calling this uh, just, you're calling this save all just, you are expecting this to be written. So you are getting the actual uh, when you using the data Mongo. Okay, so we have used the data JPA. Here we are using MongoDB, so we are using data Mongo test, right? And then you can, you know, do the verification. When you do the verification against the flux, you have to use the step verifier. So it will verify one after another thing. So what is the step verifier first checking? It's going to be step verifier will be creating based on the reservation flux object. What is the number of uh, next count it is expected? number of next count it is expected is a one okay and then it will expecting the next matches the response is equal to j joe and the value whatever they have the stigmatal has text the id they are saying is basically a text okay so that means they basically created this and they basically make a call the expected next count okay the expected next count one so they move the cursor by one and they get the next object and they basically now assert the values using next matches and they put a particular condition which is evaluated to 
and then they close that using this because the flux you can think about as your stream right so it will iterate over a value and you can use the step very well to verify the step one after another but okay. this verify complete means that it means your verification has been complete that's the termination operation okay So that's how they are actually testing out against the real object, right? As they have used the reactive flux. So if we go back to the reservation repository, if you Hello? wanted to see the yeah, if you wanted to go back to the reservation repository, let us go back to that. Now it is inheriting from reactive crud repository instead of third repository so it is instead of returning a single object it will return a mono or it may save all it is returning flux that's a multiple object so actually where do we need this is this one uh, yeah if you wanted to have a, like a request right and if you use a normal your cut a mongodb repository right so what happened then you have to wait for the mongodb operation to be completed right so it will be not be executed in a separate threads okay so here the operations will be executed as a separate thread and when the response has been built up that will return back to the client and using that what advantage we'll gain is that we can use the small number of thread pool and we can serve the multiple requests every request will be assigned to the thread pool and one of the threads will execute that when it is ready then it is merged to your main thread and the responses is going back to the client okay okay basically means asynchronously you're telling hmm. so basically the advantage out here is that you can you know serve the number of request in a shorter period of time because it is not synchronous it's each operation is asynchronous number one number two is as far as we have seen the reactive manifest the next point is the resiliency right yes one is responsive so it will response within a normal uh, lesser amount of time right then you have resiliency that is achieved uh, like scaling right so your scalability so scalability can improve if you take lesser number of resources and you better utilize your cpu threads you can serve more people uh, more requests and you can you know scale using more instances okay okay fine now so far what you have done we have only seen the server side. Now let's so look at the will use MongoDB. We won't be able to use any relational databases. Ah, non-relational database. MongoDB is a non-relational database. No, no. I am telling that we can use relational database also. Yes, we can yes. use relational database also. Then you have to use the reactive uh, library for that. That is RC, uh, RC, RCB2. Kind of library that is there which will support for your relational databases request to be serving over a flux or mono that is also being supported okay okay both are being supported now here in the client application so client application is going to do what client application will make a call to the this particular service so here what they basically previously have seen the rest template right okay rest template to make an external call in the web mob so now here we use basically web client when you are using a reactive client that is there right so now it will be obviously asynchronous call so here we have created a reactive client now reactive client is as it is returning multiple object so it will return a flux 
correct? And it will be injecting with a web client. And it's basically going to call 8080, the reservation service, and you got to retrieve the value using get call, and it's going to be converting the other response body into a flux of reservation type. The reservation being the same type. Now, how are you going to be testing that? So for testing that, what we are doing is again, uh, we are doing going to be using Wormog, right? We because cannot use that step verifier function that. No, no, step so verify is different, right? Step verify, what is the step verify going to do when you're going to be receiving that particular flux object or a mono object? Then you will use the step verifier. Right, but if you don't want it to call the external service, then you call the web mock. So you basically intercept that. Okay. 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 So web mock, you can set up a under it before annotation. Here we have check out the client, right? And here you have the stub running property stub mode local, and what you actually you know. Given a specific ID that you are calling the reservation service with the incident rights report, and it's locally going to be intercepting that. So it will again go and stop by mock when the URL is matching that, then it will be intercept by mock a response object and it's going to be returning the response that is there. Now for verification of our case, we just going to be just calling the client the get reservation. Then we make a call. We create the object. We expect there should be another next call that will be there. And on the next match, we check and we get the second object that is Joe. And we have verification is complete. Otherwise, what you can do, we can do the expect next matches, expect next matches. This way we can call. So we that way we can also verify both of the objects that are there. So on the client side, what you are doing, we are just simply, you know, checking that particular call has been made. We are using the spin data web flux. We are using a starter test, reactive test, and then contact stop runner, which is just giving me the web box. So these are the two tests with which you can, you know, test out the contract. So you can create, you know, for your service, you can create a client this application. Plugin repositories, this plugin repositories, we hmm. have to like uh, use this dependency or we can download them. No, no. Why are we downloading the dependency? We will always mention the dependency in the Maven or Gradle, right? Hmm. We don't manually manage the dependency. That's why you use these tools. OK. Yeah, we don't need to. So that is your contact testing that you can do. Now, coming back to your integration test. So your client is there. Your service is there is the same as before. Now you write your integration test. So integration test, what you're going to do, you have like a main method. So let's look into that. So in main method, what you are doing, you just have a simple Spring Boot application and your resources, there is nothing. Only thing is that what is the customer service host name is, okay? So you can give any kind of host name that is there, okay? That is there. And then in the form.xml, what you have, you have, A dependency of the customer client so that you have integrated out here you, here you are using spring boot web so you are not using spring boot uh, web flux okay and then there is just a additional uh, reactive core reactive nati reactive test lombok etc are there because we need to uh, do the testing of that. Now coming back to the integration test. So integration test in a separate folder. 
there uh, you have the normal okay so you have the customer client configuration what is that that is is coming from the customer client itself Okay, here you have the REST template and you have the configuration of the customer client as a bean, where that uh, REST template has been in a push as a dependency and the service URL is also there for the customer client to make a call. Okay, so we are having that particular- but Actually, this one I'm not understanding. What it is doing, this customer? Okay, so like we have seen the previous example, right? okay so previous example it's just calling the customer one so let's look into the service first okay in the service what you have is basically a customer object it has an id it is first name last name email it has a customer repository which is a jpa repository it has a rest template which is just a way all customer or a specific customer that you are getting okay and customer service application which is on the start is creating two default customer the default customer into the customer repository database there's nothing and the normal test that we have seen before that is there okay that is the service right yes now in the client what you have written so let's check that so the client obviously we have a, like a customer client so for making the call what you need to do we need to have a, like a rest template right and the URA where are you going to make the call to so that is intercepted injected using your controller and then the get customer and the get customer by id two methods are there so those are being called okay and when you have like a list of uh, customers, then we normally use the parameterized type reference when you have the collections because they are how we represent, okay, collection or list, and that's how we getting the REST template exchange. We pass the URI, the whole, then the get null, then the you know parameter type in which it need to convert and then our case it will be just returning back so, so this is my client application yes so where we are making the call why do we have to write that it's an http request right yeah so it's a http repos so we spring provide a being called rest template okay and this REST template is help us to make HTTP calls. I can use the low level API of any HTTP client. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So instead of that, I can use this exchange method where I can pass the get method I'm calling. What is the endpoint URL? If I'm passing any HTTP entity which has a header, body, etc., and the parameter is type in which the response need to be converted into like here we are getting one customer class we are passing the customer class and any path variable that is there because here we have mm -hmm. one path variable so that with this we can easily make a call to the external services okay this is more beneficial yeah this is easier to write right now the client is there now how are going to be how are going to be writing the integration test so when you're going to be writing the integration test uh, uh, we are just having injecting the customer client there here they are uh, using loading from the class path resource etc they have done we don't have to do all of that we can use another annotation that is our configuration property source okay so all of these things yeah. 
are are not required. Okay. So this this comes in the integration part. Yeah, this is coming to the integration test. Okay. So we don't require all of that. Whatever they have we have written out here. So basically, this is the main test where you're making the call to the particular service, right? Okay. So what is this Cloud Foundry? Cloud Foundry was previously was a service which was been provided. It's a private cloud service, which is public cloud offering, which was been provided by the Pivotal. Now it has been changed into VMware and Zoom because the Pivotal has been bought by VMware. Okay. okay. So this, um, if you need to you know, access that, that example was given. But what we need to do is a simple step is that um, instead of you know having understanding the other cloud, we just going to be having the client call that particular ID, okay? And then we can do test the assertion whether we are getting the object, right? So that has been what is the difference going to be here? We are not going to be using any kind of word stubbing, okay? No. Okay. That's the only difference. That will be there. Nothing else. DDD assertion is. DDD assertion. DDD assertion is another library, right? Hmm. That they are using. But currently, that we don't need to use. Uh, this is coming from your asset chain. So BDD is basically nothing but behavior driven testing. Behavior driven development rather. So, so this is in JUnit 5 no, this is, no, no, this is not JUnit 5 or anything. This is coming from Assert J. Okay. Assert J provides uh, different assertion utility methods. And behavior driven assertion is one such uh, assertion is there. So in the BBC assessment, what do you say that then this ID is equals to. So this mm -hmm. is a little bit of more fluent than assert then kind of a assert equals kind of a scenario. It's just say then is equal to or it can say is greater than or those kind of things. Okay. It's just a library. Example of assert G as a library. That's all. Okay. So difference between the integration test and other test is that where you are using WAMOC, you just, you know, checking your clients, external REST API clients are working or not in terms of the response parsing and converting into the object that you are not mocking out, only the additional call that you are mocking out. And here the example of integration test, you are actually making the call to the external service and you are getting the response back. Sir, in integration test, we make actual calls. Right, right. We make the actual calls. Okay. Now coming to the another point, that is the Spring security. So whenever we include the Spring security, we add the additional layer of security, where that we choose either user need to be socially signed, or it need to be is a authentication identity server to which the user identity is being established. So the security subject should be having the detail about the user, its roles and other things. Those are basically transferred from the client using a server using a JWT token, right? The mostly that we find, okay. So let's see if we have like a security enable, right? In that case, what he can do, okay? For security enable, how we can write unit test cases. So for example, out here, obviously for security enable, we have to use the Spring Boot Starter Security. Okay, Starter Web, Plumbox Starter Test, and Spring Boot Security, Spring Security Starter Test. So those are being by default included. When you include that automatically, you can do certain configuration. Here, what we did is we enable Google method security. P post enable. Okay. 
here we are saying is that we are going to be create a user detail service. User detail service is establish the current uh, login user with the username, with the default password encoder, password, and the we are given them a certain role, user and admin. One is for the user. And here we are using in-memory user detail manager. So they will be stored in memory. This is like a sample application. Real application, you just uh, don't mention this user detail service as it is where with default user, you actually integrate and look up the detail from the external identity provider. Okay. Like Okta or Auto, etc. And then we have a, like a REST controller. And in this REST controller, uh, we have like a gate mapping. Okay, the gate service. And in the gate service, we have say P authorization. So whenever whoever is called this uh, service need to be authenticated. Okay. And who is the authenticated user? You can get always that from the security context holder. And then from the context, you get the authentication object. And you getting this name being printed out. That mean your normal service definition that is there. So now in security, uh, hmm. for reactive programming, we will use. You don't need to add any other dependency. Yes, yes. For reactive programming, you have to add a different dependency on the Spring security. Okay, it also has is a reactive version. Okay. Now coming into that, how we can even test that? So there is a specific class is with mock users. This annotation we are using. So what happened with the mock user? It creates a uh, security context and create uh, make the user authenticated. So whenever you make the call, it is been properly executed. And if you don't use the mock user, then obviously you get the authentication credential not found exception. Okay. So which level you are adding the security, that level you have to add the mock user detail. Now, how are we going to be passing this detail when you are making the mock HTTP calls, right? Here we have not mentioned the mock user or anything. So we can use the user detail from the users is loading the user details service okay and then you can mention with your mock HTTP service request filter that i'm going to be making the mock request call with this certain user and based on that you can get that responses written so okay. what is that with user user in both yeah with user user means you are passing a particular user detail right so user detail services actually has the responsibility of returning the security user with which the call or user has been authenticated right it has few things it has the user name or email address or it will also have the user role so if we again revisit our application we find there is a user detail service that has been a bean has been overrated, right? So user with default password, they have created, they have created two users. Okay. One is with the user with a role like this, one with the user, normal user role. Okay. Yes. Mm. And then they are returning in memory user detail manager with these two users okay okay one with the admin privilege and other normal normal okay so when you wanted to access that if you wanted to have a, like a authenticated user in the unit test case you can put at the rate with mock user so that will by default make it authorized right so that means you don't get any error. Your the minimum check is P authorized. 
that means there should be any user who is making the call on their behalf right okay mm -hmm. so that means that this method is secure correct and you need to pass a authenticated user when you are making a call but this we have implemented on the service layer so when he implemented this on a service layer the authentication then you pass add it with mock user so it creates a dummy users and based on that it method call is been successful if you don't mention that then you get a authentication credential not found because your security context that is there that will be empty you, there will be no authentication details okay so when you're passing the rest template right we normally use the mock mvc to make the call right okay so here is the example is when you're making the call you can pass a user detail as well okay so you pass the user load user by username and you pass that particular detail. Okay. So let me quickly do a recap. Uh, so basically, we have understood how to do a basic um, test. That means just you check first check you need to do whether your context is properly loaded. Next check you can you know test separately your data GPA. Third thing, you can test uh, separately in your web layer. Fourth thing, you can do uh, testing for your MongoDB layer as well. And you can use the Wermock to for REST client or web client. Okay. Similarly, you can uh, create contact driven testing using a separate client module. And you can do integration test where you are actually making the REST API call and do the actual testing and the lastly for security we have in the security testing that is your mock user that with which we can ensure that the request is already authenticated any questions so far okay so recording will be provided you guys can revisit this Yes, this should.